You know what they say, you either die the hero or live long enough to start a podcast and people realize they actually hate you. This couldn't be more true for Howie Mandel, who has become so disliked that even Dana White walked off his podcast within 20 seconds of being introduced. Only an amazing businessman, you are an inspiration, you are a philosopher, the way you do business, the way you uh, conduct your business and your friendships and media is, uh, I'm, I'm jealous. And, but Dana, I can't thank you enough for being here. And thank you for all the kind words. I appreciate it. I, I am so tired of doing podcasts. It's, I, I'm literally done with them. I'm not doing any more podcasts. However, the podcast that changed Howie's public perception actually occurred when he was a guest on Not Today Pal, which is a podcast hosted by Jamie Lynn Sigler and Rob Eiler, who are most famous for their roles as brother and sister on The Sopranos, one of the most iconic TV shows of all time. Now, the problem with this episode can be assessed by the very first thing that Rob said. Uh, some people would introduce our guest as uh, Hollywood royalty, but to me, he is the Christopher Columbus of my people, which are the germaphobes, the OCD. Thank you. These people, I just wanna thank you for everything you've done. Thank you. I'm the Christopher Columbus of mental health? Yeah, I feel like you were the first one I out discovered, there. I discovered uh, neurosis and You put OCD. it on the map. I feel like you went so out there. So the Nina, the Pinta, and the sanitizer. Oh, yes, me. Wow. very good. There it I, did there. I yeah. love it. Rob chose to introduce Howie not for his accomplishments in Hollywood, such as being the host of Deal or No Deal, one of the biggest game shows of all time, perhaps being a long-standing judge on America's Got Talent, or maybe being the voice of Gizmo in the 1980s classic The Gremlins, or even simply that Howie is a veteran stand-up comedian who has been performing since 1977. Instead, Rob chose to celebrate Howie for his openness over the years about his obsessive compulsive disorder. It is very publicly known that Howie is a germaphobe, but that is a massive understatement to how he describes his OCD, a vicious dark circle. His makeup artist must use brand new sponges every day. He won't touch his money unless it's been washed. He avoids handrails like the plague. Handrails are my enemy. I never go near a handrail. Even the reason why he is bald is because he believes it is cleaner than having hair to maintain and wash. I'm always on the verge of death in my mind, he said in 2009. He even wrote a book about going public with his struggle with OCD called Here's the Deal, Don't Touch Me. Now the reason why Rob introduced Howie this way is because Rob too suffers from extreme OCD, specifically in the form of obsession over germs. Rob made it clear from the beginning that he looked up to Howie. He established common ground with their OCD struggles and it seemed like Rob wanted to deep dive on this topic. Do you think germaphobe eventually will get a new name that'll be changed into where they won't use germaphobe anymore? Like a more it'll, technical it'll get, name? It'll get woke. Oh, like, it, it, there is a technical name. What is it? Uh, misophobia. Misophobia. Yes, but uh, but I think eventually it'll just be known as Howie. Rob <laughs> probably lives your dream life, to be quite honest. Why? I Rob. barely leave my home, yeah. Either do I. Yeah, oh, I do, really? I, no, I, it seems like I'm out there because I'm on television and I'm on podcasts, but I'm, a, I'm a, a hermit. I live in the fetal position in my room, wherever I am, unless I come out to, to uh, regale you with stories <laughs> right <laughs> I've, but do you love being home or is it like a torture really like, i want to go out but i'm stuck here i spend my life trying not to be tortured but because of my resting my resting face or my resting being is tortured mm -hmm. so i spend my life not to be tortured Howie also goes on to say that he is doing better than ever these days. He is taking medication and receiving therapy to combat his disability. But the key thing that helps him through his tribulations is distraction. The biggest one is distraction. So I, I stay busy, as busy as possible. I'm doing, at my age, to be doing all the things that I'm doing as frequently as I do them is, um, is by choice and 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 then when i'm doing that then it distracts me from my own inner mind unless you show up someplace 
and they want to talk about it. No, I'm okay. Oh, with really? That. You want to talk about no, it? No, I'm okay talking about it. It's interesting that Howie details how not thinking about his OCD is the main reason why he is able to cope. And he even says that when people talk about it, it makes him very uncomfortable. But then he quickly recants his statement and claims to be just joking. Howie likely said that because most people probably ask him a few questions and then move on. But Rob genuinely wanted to learn, have a deeper conversation, and maybe get some advice from Howie. And after eight minutes straight of this discussion, Howie again jokingly stated that he did not want to talk about it. I think even in this moment, if we talk about it, I'd be a lot more comfortable rolled up <laughs> at home than sitting here with two people I don't really know. I like you. I'm not knocking you, but yeah, I, yeah, I, don't yeah. know, I, I don't know what you've touched or who you've been with or what you're, what's breathing out of you. But the truth of the matter is I'm doing this and uh, this is good. The conversation temporarily shifts for a few minutes, but Rob circles back to asking for some advice regarding his dating life. So something that's really is, is a problem in almost all my relationships is the phone in the bed. When I go to lay down mm -hmm. and the girl I'm dating has her phone in the bed and like I say, I'm like, hey, listen, I'm crazy. Like, you know, that's the way I did. I go, I'm crazy. It bothers me. I go, can you try it? And they're like, oh, of course. Yeah, sorry. And then, of course, the next day, and because the, they're used to putting their phone in the bed. Right. And I find the phone to be so disgusting. And I want my bed to be very right. clean, right. wonderful place. Give me some advice. I also want to know from one to ten. Ass is pods. That, well, ass pods? Yeah, instead of air pods. Ass pods. So Rob asks for genuine advice and Howie makes a bad joke. And this is where the tone shifts a little bit. It seems like Howie diverts to humor when he either doesn't understand a question or wasn't paying attention, or simply just because he is a comedian. However, you'll notice that his jokes don't land most of the time because his delivery is extremely dry and not witty. Combine that with the fact that he doesn't really want to discuss his OCD and you get this nightmare of a conversation. What's it, my advice to you? Or, or even to, would something like that bother you? Are you talking about the you? germs? A hundred percent. I wasn't even thinking of the germs. Oh, it's I mean, how exciting are you if you bring a woman to bed and she brings her phone? I'm talking about... Uh, how about a little scroll and roll? There, there, are, there, are, there are women who lay in bed at night on their phone. And then not they take on a phone. date. I'm not talking about a date. I'm saying I'm dating someone for months and they're, you know, in their bed. Or, or sometimes I just, you show up at their place, you show up at my place. And the, the phone is on the bed because they were in the bed on their phone. The... The germs from the phone in the bed really bother me, but I can't, you, what are you supposed to do? Like, I can't. I don't think about the germs on the phone. The germs on the phone would be the same as the germs on her body. Like, where did she put her phone that she oh, wasn't? Oh no, people, you know they do swabs on phones and they're like phones. Don't are, bother me with this. Don't, don't tell me what's the phone is bad. You just asked me, I think. To clarify, this is what Rob is talking about. Let's say I'm Rob and his partner is my girlfriend, Riley. Rob does not like when his partner scrolls social media while laying in bed or maybe even leaving their phone on the bed when they get up and go to the bathroom. Rob thinks this is filthy because cell phones carry 10 times more bacteria than most toilet seats. Now, Riley and I don't typically use our phones in bed because a few minutes after we crawl into our Helix Midnight Lux mattress, we fall into a deep sleep. Helix Sleep makes premium mattresses and bedding that are customized to fit your needs and conveniently shipped right to your door. The Helix lineup offers 20 unique mattresses, including their award-winning Lux, an ultra-premium elite collections, the Helix Plus, a mattress designed for big and tall sleepers, and the Helix Kid mattress, designed for growing bodies and endorsed by child sleep and medical experts. Everybody's different, and Helix knows that, so they made a sleep quiz that matches your unique body type and sleep preferences to the perfect mattress for you. I personally am a side sleeper who likes a medium mattress and shares a mattress with my partner. Based on my results, Helix matched me with their Midnight Lux mattress. I've had my Helix mattress for one week now and I love it. Now usually, I don't fall asleep very fast. I tend to toss and turn, go from my right side to my left side on my back, and I try everything, and eventually in 30 minutes or so, I'll fall asleep. But since I got my Midnight Lux, I'll hit the bed on my right side, and in less than five minutes, I'm out. And also, since I'm a side sleeper, I would often wake up with aches and pains, typically in my neck or my shoulder from just kind of laying on my side like that. And after Helix, I have absolutely zero discomfort or pain after long hours of sleeping on my side. The best part is that Helix delivers your mattress right to your door with free shipping in the US. The mattress comes rolled up in a box and is super easy to set up by yourself. And if you're like me, you'll have some fun setting it up as well. Helix has a 100 night sleep trial, so you get more than three months to make sure you love it. Plus they have a 10 year warranty and they even offer financing options and flexible payment plans so a great night's sleep is never 
never far away. I love my Helix mattress, and I think you would too. So if you're looking for a new bed, check out Helix Sleep. You can click the link below or go to helixsleep.com slash patrickcc to get 20% off your Helix mattress, plus two free pillows. Thanks again to Helix for sponsoring this video. Howie finally decided to give Rob some advice, and it was honestly pretty decent, but then Rob shot it down immediately. Can I give you an idea? Please. Those little... Ass pods? <laughs> no, that's for taking calls. Oh. But but uh, what about those little sandwich bags? Those little... Uh, Ziploc? Ziploc, clear sandwich bag. You go, before you come in the bed, just drop it in here, zip it up. There you go. You can see it. It's there, and it doesn't touch the sheets. You should have sandwich Ziploc ba bags on your nightstand if you're single. Listen, I like that, but the problem then becomes if they don't remember that I don't like the phone in the bed, they don't remember to put it in the bag. You know what I mean? Are you dating somebody right now? Right now I'm not because of my many issues. Since Rob did not take Howie's advice, Howie thought of trying to turn the situation into a joke, suggesting that maybe the girl was on her phone because she was on probation being tracked by a parole officer. But Rob didn't even think he was joking and even talked about how he once dated a girl on probation. I don't not let somebody do it. I just, after like three weeks of dating, if, if they can never do it, I just go, I can't do this anymore. <laughs> And then I'm gone, you know, instead of trying to be like, can't you please? I don't well, want to make it know they're problem. not on, like they could, you don't, there might be a reason for it. Maybe they're on probation and they have to be, you know, they're being tracked. But I've dated girls on probation who do not, don't do the phone in the bed. They're fine with it. And you're okay with the ankle bracelet? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because we, we do the alcohol wipes before she gets in. And he doesn't like to leave the house anyway. Yeah, And you don't great. do the alcohol wipes on her phone before you even go to bed? She won't, you know, I also don't, the phone You is, have a woman that'll go to bed with you but won't let you wipe her phone? Here's the problem. The phone is up by the head. The ankle bracelet's down by the feet. I'm so it doesn't about... bother me as much. Once Howie realizes that Rob is not understanding the joke, he gets serious again, trying to give genuine advice, only for Rob to once again immediately shut down Howie's thoughts. No problem telling anybody I'm a germaphobe. But if you say you're a germaphobe, can't you say, can't I swab or wipe your phone? Yes, but then it becomes the the living the life where I don't want to be watching her every hour and every minute of every day. No, just when before she's bed. Walking. It's a thing. But it's not a before bed. Like people like to go and just walk into the bed and put the the phone. Like people like to be in the bed even when it's not. Do you bedtime. sleep in a phone case? Why do they Listen, always go I, in there I, before I, and I put their phone? I need to play in a bubble. I live in a one bedroom, dude. I don't live in a mansion. Half the half the apartment is the bed. Wow. Yeah. You're really charming the ladies. I can hear the, the, like, hey. the ladies listening right now. Bro, that's why I'm single, man. And a ton of reasons. But there was another layer of disconnect that was more subtle, but added to the animosity in the room. Rob and Jamie realized throughout the podcast that Howie did not really know anything about them. It's common podcast etiquette to do some research on someone you are about to have a public conversation with, even if you are the guest on their podcast. But Howie revealed the first clue when he asked if they were a couple. Hi. Are you two a couple? I don't know no, a lot about you. No, no, we, no, no. we were no, on... No, 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 no. We were co-stars in a television show as late early teens, late teens uh, um, for 10 years, and then um, have continued our close friendship. We have a unique chemistry and sort of that's what the show is about. Were you ever a couple, even when you were working together? Oh, Never. Not even for, not you even, like, not oh, even we flirted. A, yeah. like, we would go out to clubs and parties and never, it was always like very, we played brother we and sister. We feel so like brother, brother and sister. Is that, and that you, you live that instead of you yeah. live like brother and sister. Rob gets physically uncomfortable when people insinuate him and Jamie are a couple, and it's hilarious. It's likely that most of the people watching this video do not know about the Not Today Pal podcast. The podcast was established because Jamie and Rob have been best friends since childhood. They acted as brother and sister on The Sopranos and literally grew up on the show, so they carried that brother-sister bond and dynamic throughout their lives. With a little bit of research, Howie could have avoided that awkward moment, but a few minutes later, Later, he mentioned that he did not know them again before explaining to them what their whole podcast is about. My view of from where I stand, I don't know, I know who you are, but I don't know you guys. Mm -hmm. But as we sat down, you you kind of captured the beginning of this as like, I'm f***ed up and how he helped me, you know, like uh, I, not help me, but you know, I have mental health, I love that, I have problems, I'm single, I can't find somebody who won't put their filthy phone in my bed. And then slowly but surely, the wave of neurosis comes to this side mm -hmm. where you take shoes for no reason at all. Mm -hmm. 
you're very concerned about what others think mm -hmm. more than what is right do. This is like a wave of, this is like a group session where we're going around. It's a meeting. It's like an intervention. On the surface, this might seem like a subtle issue, but it's disrespectful at worst, but unprofessional at best. Like imagine how Howie would feel if the player midway through Deal or No Deal was like, oh, so I'm supposed to guess the cases and hope that they contain low amounts of money because I want to win the high amount of money? It's like, yeah, dude, welcome to the show. There was also a moment where they talked about their ages and his reaction to that information just made his level of cluelessness more apparent. Because we've been friends for like 20 five years or whatever the boys pick a photo of us on uh from they google a photo Wait, how of us. old are you i'm 38 oh wow same age as my kid one of my kids yeah yeah so we've been friends for 26 going on you're in 27. your 40s? I'm 42 you don't look it wow oh thanks so you're dealing with a bunch of kids here huh i thought uh -huh. you were kids yeah no. no. And after about the 20 minute mark, the conversation just totally fell off the rails. The hosts are agitated that Howie doesn't know them and they think he's kind of being an asshole. Howie doesn't know if he should be funny or serious and it's not like they can tell the difference anyways. And this train wreck of a conversation really becomes noticeable in their conversation about Nair, which is a hair removal cream that safely removes unwanted hair from the body. Every day, every morning shave? No. No? No. You don't Nair. have to shave the sides? I use Nair. Nair. Do you? Yeah. Okay. Love Nair. She and does. is that so... Love it. When you're in a hotel, are mm -hmm. you wiping your hair on like the hotel towels and tossing them? But where does the where does this go? What does that mean? I've never used hair. I've never Nair. used Nair. Nair. <laughs> yeah. What's the process there? I'm not using Nair. I shave. Nair is... I thought you might. My, my grandma used Nair. Nair is... Your grandma? My you grandma can, used Nair on her arms. You can open a bottle really? of Nair and yeah. smell. Why do you know that? Because she always had the Nair and everyone made fun of her in the... So you have a hairy... Like your grandmother has hairy arms and then she, she never would did. cream it Because she creamed it off. But you asked, you asked your grandmother, uh, Grandma, where did the hair go? I'm fascinated that the fact that her grandson knows the process in his grandmother's hair removal. Well, again, Howie, you're living in mansions. People like me, I grew up in a one bedroom with many people. Oh, so and she all used to come stuff, over, is right there. All yeah. your stuff is with each other. Is that the only no, limbs that she removed hair from? That I know of, I know it was a big thing for her arms, but she probably used it on her whole body. Yeah. Really? Well, she was older. She didn't use it on her whole body. I she, don't know, she wasn't that old. I was a young, you know, I was- you Did know, she, she have a probably, landing strip? I don't know. I never, why do you say I don't know I with disappointment? Looked. Like, why would you, why are you disappointed? Because I feel like I'm disappointing you not knowing the answer. Well, how disappointed am I not knowing what your grandmother's vagina looks like? Well, I've been alive for 38 years. No one ever asked me if my grandma had a landing strip, so I thought... You brought up the fact that your grandmother was removing hair. From her arms. Well, it doesn't just stop there. <laughs> the conversation is extremely unfocused and oddly hostile. But the true peak moment of chaos that ended the conversation was when they brought up a photo of Howie acting in the 1989 movie Little Monsters. Howie brought up his OCD, which they took seriously because that's what they do. Then he tried to make a joke about it and then kind of insulted Jamie by getting her name wrong and calling her Amy. Yeah, that's me on the right. I need to show my kids this movie. It's so I I, remember, I have to, they're gonna love it. This was a hell for me. It was hell. Well, we're, because we're, we're, gonna, we're gonna a lot of hell no, up for you here. How you I apologize. No, but I'm wrapped in in rubber so and you know much, and, yeah. and, and na now it sounds like your dream. I felt like such a dick. You did. Mm. See what I did there. I got it. Oh, because you were wrapped Amy. in rubber. Yeah. Jamie. Okay. Jamie. Amy. Jamie. So, so I, I, was just, <laughs> I called you Jamie, Jamie so. Oh, he probably, it might you know, be confusing. Just it's a little okay. nickname, Yamie. Yamie. I thought I was wrong. No, I didn't so you know. didn't call me Yamie. I didn't know. I didn't understand Yamie. what he was doing. Yeah. And I tried to <laughs> All chemistry was lost. The nail in the coffin was when Howie just refused to answer one of Rob's questions. I'm not into old women or young. Like, I don't even like the 18, 20. I'm, I'm like, I like that middle. I like that sweet spot of you know, whatever that is, 30, where I don't have to think about it. I don't have to go, oh, that person's older. Oh, that person too, looks too young. You know what I mean? Nope. Howie looks back off set, which seems like he's looking for a way to get out of this conversation and leave. But they're only 30 minutes into the podcast, so it's not time for him to go. And it just keeps getting worse. You're really good at what you do. Hey. I, I, I've watched it. You're really good actors, too. Thank Thank you. Are you still pursuing acting at all? I am. I hate it. Yeah, he hates it. Really? I hate it. Yeah, I hate the like weird because you know what it is like. You just told me how much you loved it when I, I would. 
I said I want to do movies, and you said I like it because you can read the scripts. And no, you know I'm saying it. I hate television compared to film. I'd rather do film because you know what you have to so do. So are you not? Are you it. going after film? I hate all of it. No, oh. I, I yeah, I don't. I don't understand why. I don't. Like, if I had to life. choose, I was just saying it's interesting that I don't like television, but I like the fact that in movies you get, to, you know what I mean. Okay. How he does not relate to Rob at all, but they keep asking him questions. Do you have recurring dreams? I'll translate. Uh, yes. Thanks, guys. That was Howie. Um, now Rob's trying to make jokes and they're not landing, and Howie starts to look pissed off. They all seem very obviously agitated and are looking for an excuse to just end this train wreck. But before Howie goes, he just needs to remind everyone that he didn't actually forget Jamie's name. He didn't think her name was Amy, but rather Rob confused him when he called her by her nickname, Yamy. Like, I've done my homework. And Amy, you, I just said your name out loud. <laughs> it's like, that's the problem with overthinking. Mm. Get you in trouble if you just do Always. what you know. Every time. Yeah. Every It'll time. But okay. it's not in trouble. It's a great It's a great moment. It's great that you thought her name was Amy. I love it. Yeah. That's a great moment. Yeah, yeah. It's well, a great moment. Then you've had a shitty life. Yeah. If that <laughs> I don't in your leave my mind apartment. I don't is leave my a apartment. great moment, me I say no to getting everything. the wrong name. Yeah. I yes, say no to so everything. Nice. How? Why are you here today? Because uh, I did say yes to Tom. I said yes to Tom and Christina when they offered uh, us a podcast. After the show, commenters flooded to defend Rob and Jamie. Howie is a jackass. This guy disrespected Jamie. Why was Howie so rude to Rob? Rob was excited to talk with Howie and get some insight to OCD and possible advice, and Howie just criticized everything Rob said. Hard to watch. I thought I liked Howie until hearing him on this episode. Not your fault, Rob and Jamie. You two are the best. The guest was just surprisingly sh**. Especially to Rob, who started out ready to connect and ended up desperate to get the f*** out of there. Brutal. Keep in mind, Howie is 68 years old and Rob is 38. Howie comes from a generation where mental health was vastly stigmatized. He probably still has those moments where he does not want to vocalize his OCD. He doesn't want to be perceived as weak. Which is also why he consistently keeps himself working on all these TV shows and podcasts, so he is not consumed by his disability. Rob comes from the generation where the importance of mental health is more accepted and understood. Younger people who suffer are encouraged to and more likely to speak about their illnesses. It's not clear if Rob was necessarily asking Howie for help looking for a specific answer or if he was just trying to have a general conversation surrounding the topic. They suffer from a similar condition but their personalities and their approach to handling it could not be more opposite. But this all accelerated when YouTuber Too Lazy to Try made a video criticizing Howie's behavior on the show. Too Lazy felt like Howie was being unsympathetic to Rob's genuine questions. This one was tough to listen to, but I think it was mostly because of Howie. It felt like he was trying to make Rob as uncomfortable as possible. Like anything Rob would say, Howie would ask him 10 questions about it, and then how he would make some weird jokes that would never land, and then he'd have to explain everything. And his community agreed with him. The irony of an old man dressing like a teenager only to talk down on the other adults as if they're the ones too immature to be worthy of mutual respect. Jamie and Rob gave their thoughts on the whole situation on a later podcast with Jim Norton. I don't want to call anybody out, but sometimes you have a guest who you don't really like very much. Oh, have you had that? People notice that. Like, listen, I don't, maybe we Just did. Like Maybe we Just did. What? Yeah, maybe we did. Now, obviously, no Just names. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, no <laughs> names. But can I ask you? <laughs> There'll be no way they could figure it out. No, no, no. Because I've, I've had. <laughs> no one noticed. <laughs> I've had things like that too, where you're just not clicking with a person, or there's something, or they they come in with a f attitude. Yeah, or yeah, yeah. What you don't have to say who the person was, but what was it? Was it were they snotty? They didn't with... want to be here. It felt from the second they walked in, and uh, to the point where we just felt like we don't have to do this. And it was just, to me, felt like a clunky conversation because there was just not a lack of respect, but a lack of respect. It was just like, you know, we're we're here just doing our podcast. We're, we're not claiming to be anything. And I think this person was just coming with a lot of judgments about the oh. two of us, it seemed. And every time we asked a question, it was an, you, the answer was making fun of us in the answer. You know, really? you know, they, you know, in acting, you're supposed to do yes. And like sure. somebody says something and to continue an improv, you go yes. And it, it was just no. And 
It was no. Wow. It was the opposite of yes and. It was everything was no. Then Too Lazy made another video detailing their response, which is when Howie realized he was receiving backlash for his behavior. He commented on the video, this is my favorite episode yet. Keep up the good work. Finally, Howie decided to formally respond to the situation on his own podcast by going clip by clip rewatching what took place and giving his perspective of what was going on inside his head. First, he said that he thought everyone was having a good time. If you don't like me or you don't think I'm funny or you don't think what I'm doing is funny and that's what this whole conversation has been about. So then I saw this too lazy to try to say that I was insufferable and they were having a bad time with me. In my recollection, in my recollection, I didn't sense that they were having a bad time with me because here's the thing. I don't care if you don't like me. I don't care if you don't find me entertaining. The fact that I may have made somebody feel like uncomfortable in the room as their guest really bothers me. So after Howie saw that Rob and Jamie told Jim Norton that they had a bad experience with him, he DM'd her on Instagram and read it on his podcast. He said, I hope I wasn't the horrible guest you were talking to Jim Norton about. If I came off offensive, I apologize. I truly was happy to be on your show and had a good time. To which Jamie replied, I'm so glad to know you enjoyed it. Truly, we were very excited to have you on. And to confirm Howie's suspicion that they were actually talking about him, he asked her, so I was the awful guest? To which she did not reply. And even how he understood that by Jamie not messaging him back, she was basically saying that he was the awful guest. That's confirmation that it was me. And then now I've been watching the Too Lazy to Try because he shows scenes from it where I, I'm, I'm, it's been killing me. How can I construe, like, where would they get a bad vibe from me? How he spends the next 18 minutes going through many of the clips I played for you in this video and explaining what he was thinking during that time. And trust me when I tell you that his reaction to every single clip was that he was just joking and they did not understand his humor. And during his apology, he kept cracking jokes. Because I'm medicated, when I'm not performing on stage, I, I live in a gray zone and my mood's there. So I'm not a good reactor because people will go I'll say something and then they'll go are you, why are you so mad I go I'm not mad I'm just not hmm. I'm not mad I'm just saying that they that their interpretation was he doesn't give a f he doesn't want to be here and that's not true I love you guys I'm a fan of you guys I'm gonna keep watching you guys I'm actually apologizing that I wouldn't make you feel that way I'm not uh, I'm not saying you're are wrong you, you're I'm not saying are you talking to the Sopranos kid I didn't know they were on the Sopranos <laughs> yeah you know what? I came out of this podcast thinking I was great. People are going to love this. In their comments, they hated me. Their, their viewers, because they're on their wavelength, like ours are on ours, they hated me. They hated me. I didn't care that their viewers hated me. What I do care about is that I made them uncomfortable. You visibly made them uncomfortable. I'm looking at this now. You answer and she looks back at a control room like, guys, what the fuck is this? What's going on? Just Someone thing. help us! And also during his apology, he kept cracking jokes. Obviously, fans did not take this apology very well. Howie is just unflattering as a podcast host. Some people were just not meant to podcast. The more he talks, the less I like him. It seems pretty evident that two people with extreme OCD do not make for a good combination on a podcast. Howie expressed multiple times that he did not want to talk about his OCD. He also has well-documented interviews that say things like, the biggest fear I have is being triggered. And if I'm triggered, I get some sort of weird thought in my head that can't go. And then my day is, is stopped. My life stops. Since Rob has a similar condition, he should know how debilitating it is to trigger someone with OCD. Plus, whenever Howie did cave and give Rob real advice, he combatively responded to Howie with multiple reasons why Howie's advice was not good enough. At the same time, Howie could have done even just a splash of research to know that they are not a comedy podcast and his dry humor could easily be perceived as being rude or insulting. Insulting, especially considering that he obviously did not know who these two were, nor did he know what their podcast was about. His half-baked, I love your podcast, I'm still going to watch, an apology seems disingenuous because he couldn't acknowledge his pitfalls without cracking a joke immediately after. Overall, I think the lesson here is, not everyone needs to start a podcast.